To solve the quadratic like this by factoring, the first thing we're going to want to do is set it equal to zero. Always remember, set your quadratic equal to zero when you need to solve. It doesn't matter what side you're going to keep them, to the left-hand side or to the right-hand side. My personal opinion, I always like to get them to the side where the coefficient of my quadratic is always going to be positive. Since it's already positive on the left-hand side, I'm going to take the terms on the right-hand side and make sure that they, I can move them over to the left-hand side. To do that, I'm just going to use my inverse operations and properties of equality. So I'm going to subtract an x on both sides, and I'm going to add a 9 on both sides. Now, I didn't subtract the x under the 11x by mistake. I did that on purpose because those are like terms. I can only subtract 11x with an x, right? And 9, I can only add that to numbers, where there are no numbers there, but you'll see, you can just kind of think of that as like a 0. So now, I'm going to have a quadratic equation equal to 0, then I can get into my factoring. Okay, so there's a lot of different techniques that we can look into when factoring quadratics when we have a not equal to one. And a lot of students like to avoid um, practicing their factoring because it gets difficult if you're doing the AC method, the box method, grouping, and there's a lot of other, you know, other methods that you can go and apply. I think one of the important things you always want to look forward to first is seeing is there any special factoring techniques that I can look for? The difference of two squares or perfect square trinomials. Now, one thing that stands out to me is my first term and my last term are squared. Anytime you see a quadratic and your first term and your last term are square numbers, always look for perfect square trinomials. It's not always going to be the case, but that is one thing you always want to be able to look forward to. And then what you can simply do is you can always test it in your head to see if your middle term is going to be two times the square root of your first time times the square root of your last term. And let's go ahead and check it. So the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 9 is 3. 2 times 3 is going to be 6, times 2 is 12, which again, that's going to be it. Now, you might know, well, is it positive or is it negative? Whatever the middle term is, that's going to be your negative. Now, if you're not following me, that's okay. Most students are not following when they're first learning how to factor with, you know, perfect square trinomials when we have a not equal to 1. So let's pretend, though, it is going to be a 2x and a 2x. Now, here's the thing, though. We know that 3 times 3 is going to equal a 9. However, our middle term is negative, right? So we have to have a negative term. That's why it's going to be a minus 3 instead of a positive 3. And again, if you just want to do a mental check, just do to straight it back over. 2x times 2x is 4x. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. And then do the inner and the outer. That's a negative 6x. That's a negative 6x. Negative 6x plus negative 6x is going to be a negative 12x. Now, I can go ahead and rewrite this as a 2x minus 3 quantity squared is equal to 0. So once the better you get at factoring, you can kind of skip this step. You can go from here right to here. And then now you can just use your inverse operations. Take the square root of both sides. That's just going to leave you now with a 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. Let's go ahead and write it over here. And then you can just add the 3 to both sides. 2x equals 3, divide by 2, divide by 2, x is equal to a 3 halves. 